Crow's semblance of misfortune, the harbinger of bad luck, something that Crow himself is not very fond of as his semblance, the manifestation of his very soul, is the ability to bring bad luck to those around him, including himself, at least the way he perceives it, blaming most of the negative events of his life on his semblance and just general bad luck. But is that his actual semblance? Or maybe it's something simpler, and the misfortune of it is only because of Crow's outlook on events, from, as Clover put it, his endless cynicism resulting in his negative view of the world. I would argue that Crow and Clover actually have the same semblance of fortune. I made a video last week discussing luck semblances and what it is that they are actually doing, what it is that they are capable of, but didn't delve fully into how this actually happens. Luck semblances are able to manipulate the probability of outcomes, not actions themselves can't actually affect what people are doing, only the outcomes of their actions, positively or negatively, lucky or unlucky. And I emphasized that it was a person's perception of events that determined whether something was positive or negative. And a lot of people, or a couple people at least, picked up on that, that, well, because of Crow's perception of his view of the world being so negative, that is what results in his misfortune. That Crow and Clover actually have the same semblance, and as Crow continues to grow throughout Volume 8 and hopefully continue on the path of recovery, Clover was an incredible positive influence on Crow, helping him see himself in a better light. You know, you shouldn't deflect a compliment, you should give yourself more credit that you had an incredible influence on Team Ruby, on your niece, her friends, etc. You've done a lot of good, give yourself some credit. Hopefully this will continue, and Crow will continue to grow in Clover's memory, taking his last words to heart, good luck, and, you know, grow in that aspect, and maybe see his semblance in a different light, that maybe he's not as unfortunate as he thinks, and his misfortune can change into simply fortune, which I would argue both Crow and Clover have, and hopefully Crow's outlook will change. It's already well established in the Ruby series that, you know, two people who are completely different can have the exact same semblance. Look at Glinda Goodwitch and Carmen Esclados. Yes, Carmen is from the book After the Fall, but she is still a very canon character and might play a role in the series proper itself. Both of them have the semblance of telekinesis. Although Glinda has more experience and has a power, more powerful semblance, they both have the same semblance and Carmen could essentially train to the same level as Glinda. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that Crow and Clover have the same semblance. Plus, Crow has had this negative outlook for probably since he was a kid, so decades I would say, and learning something new about his semblance at, after having it for this long is not unlikely either because of his negative outlook on the world, and people are constantly discovering more about their semblances and seeing their semblances evolve as a person grows. Look at Ruby Rose in Volume 7. She thought she had a speed semblance for pretty much her entire life since she unlocked it. But after seeing one person's outside look at it, one person with a similar style semblance, Crow and Clover having very similar style semblances, is another instance of this, but Ruby and Harriet you know, Harriet having a speed style semblance, notice that there's something different. Ruby actually has a small aspect of teleportation, allowing her to move around objects or get out of situations that she otherwise wouldn't be able to with just a speed semblance. So, Crow could discover that his semblance is actually fortune. Because, frankly, their abilities are manipulating the probabilities of outcomes. But how exactly is it that Crow and Clover are able to do this? If you roll a dice, and let's say rolling a 3 is a positive outcome, rolling a 5 is a negative outcome, are they just increasing the probability of that one face landing face up, or are they decreasing the probability of all the other faces landing up? Because no matter which way you do it, the probability is going to be 100%. With a dice, 1 in 6 chance for each dice face landing up normally, well, that equals up to a total of 6 out of 6, and that total's never going to change. So if you all of a sudden increase the probability of that 1 in 6 increasing to 100%, well, um, then the rest of them increase to 0 out of 6. It's not going to happen. So with that being the case, both of them are able to manipulate reality manipulate the probability of things happening. It is a reality-breaking semblance, or at least reality-bending, but with that being the case, if they could increase the probability of something positive or negative happening, 
could they decrease the probability of that positive or negative happening? Even if they don't have the exact same semblance, if Crow is already able to manipulate the probability of negative events, couldn't he just decrease the probability? Because increasing probability of negative decreases probability of positive, maybe he could just reverse that. And then maybe a positive outcome, you know, the exact one wouldn't be guaranteed, but you know, the negative outcome wouldn't happen at least. Something like that could easily be possible for Crow's character. And I see that as how his semblance will evolve as the series goes forward. Because I think Clover's last words were very significant and will play a role in Crow's future. Simply, good luck. Crow has the medallion that Clover was wearing, his four-leaf Clover pin, a sign of good luck, and I want to see Crow wear that pin throughout the rest of the series as a constant reminder of his connection with Clover and what Clover told him throughout their time together, to see the world in a more positive light, and I think Crow will take that to heart and eventually have his semblance evolve as his worldview changes. Or at least, he'll realize more about his semblance. Because let's look at some of the events that have taken place throughout the Ruby series so far, that have involved these luck semblances at least. We have Clover when he pulled the Geist out of the Petragegus body. He made a hell of a shot that was very lucky for Clover, but very unlucky for the Petragegus. Then look at Crow and Tyrion when they were fighting, and Tyrion fell into that building. Well, yeah, that's very unlucky for Tyrion, but also very lucky for Crow. In both of these situations, lucky for the fortune semblance user, but unlucky for the opponent. Very similar and seems to be almost the exact same type of situation. If we take it to the fight that happened between Crow, Clover, Tyrion, there was that one instance when Clover made that lucky shot that landed his hook in Crow's weapon and disarmed him. You could argue that Crow's semblance may have had some misfortune that affected Crow, but I would argue that since Clover was the one taking the action, the probability of the outcome was manipulated by his semblance, and it was very lucky that Clover made that shot. Unlucky for Crow. And then the finishing blow that Crow did that broke Clover's aura was a single punch. Now normally, a punch wouldn't have that kind of power, but Crow throwing the punch, the action, the outcome was where the punch landed, and... Crow just happened to land it in a very critical point that depleted the remainder of Clover's aura. Very lucky for Crow in making that shot, again, depending on how you look at it and the overall result of things, but that action that self was lucky for Crow, unlucky for Clover. Both of these situations, or all of the ones described, seem to be lucky for the semblance user in the outcomes of the actions taken, and unlucky for the opponent. It is just their outlooks on the events that are happening that display the difference. So essentially, what Crow is seeing as misfortune is only the bad things happening to the opponents, not the good things happening to himself, or the advantages he's getting in battle. Because he does say, it's very useful in a fight, but not very useful when you're fighting against allies. Because yes, there was that time that the beam fell on Ruby, or is about to, but Crow's aura was broken at that time. One thing I forgot in the previous video, so Crow's semblance was probably not active at that point. And that beam was just gonna fall anyways, it was just unfortunate that it happened at that time. Sure, unlucky, but unaffected by Crow's semblance, because... Tyrion and Crow did kind of destroy half of the building during the fight. The beam was going to fall pretty soon anyways. It just happened to be while Ruby was standing under it. Similarly with the bartender dropping the glass or knocking it off the table, the bar, you know, that could have just happened anyways, not necessarily been a result of Crow's semblance. The events just happened in a way where it seemed like it. Maybe Crow's just an unlucky person in general or sees events happening around him and just blames himself for it when it's not necessarily a result of his semblance similar to the tire popping when they were at the Brunswick Farms. That's not necessarily because of his semblance, but he was just very pissed off, very negative, and he's just seeing every negative instance happening as a result of his semblance, when that's not actually the thing, and hopefully his worldview would change. One other thing that I want to touch on is, you know, how 
Crow came about this semblance? Because there are many instances of semblances coming about because of, you know, life or death situations. Ren and Nora, for example. Ren being under siege by Grimm, developing the um, semblance that gives him the ability to mask emotions, really helped in that scenario so the Grimm didn't come after him. Nora being struck by lightning, you know, she lived because she developed her semblance. But then there's also situations like Jean, where his aura amp was shown all the way back in Volume 1, when Cardin was about to punch him. Not really in that life or death situation, but Jean's semblance kind of just happened to be aura amp. It was convenient for saving Weiss, but his semblance was already predetermined well before that. And then, you know, Weiss's semblance, hereditary, semblances evolve or develop from very different things, it seems like. And as I'm learning more about the Ruby series and talking with more people in the comments below, my view on semblances is evolving. And I want to eventually make a dedicated video on how semblances develop. But in this case, with Crow, what could it be that could have caused this semblance to develop? It could have been something that he just inherently had, which... Again, very unfortunate. He's kind of been given a crap lot in life if that's the case. Having his name be Crow already giving him the predisposition to bad luck, to misfortune. Crow's being a sign of bad luck, etc. But if his semblance evolved or awakened and it was a luck semblance, then he was already predisposed to seeing it as unlucky, etc. But there's another scenario which I want to describe, and that is um, he was part of the you know, Bronwyn tribe, a tribe of bandits, a tribe of thieves, or, you know, a tribe that was out on their own and did nefarious deeds, was constantly in battle and doing various things like that, coming in contact with other huntsmen, and Crow and Raven were sent to Beacon Academy to learn to kill huntsmen. They were already highly trained, etc., but um, one thing that's notable about the Bronwyn tribe is we don't really see any elders of the tribe. So what happened to these elders? Odds are they were probably killed on various raid missions or otherwise. And Crow, giving into the despair, maybe seeing his parents killed or something like that, could have resulted in him wishing bad things upon, you know, the opponents, the people who possibly raided the Bronwyn camp after they maybe made a crucial error on a raid and left some information about where their camp was. People came there, attacked them, and ended up with his parents being killed, or allies, friends maybe, etc. This either gave Crow the outlook that maybe he was responsible for that attack happening, or responsible for something happening, wishing ill upon others, and developing the semblance of misfortune. Just something else to think about, but yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on how you view Crow's semblance. Do you think it actually is misfortune or that Crow and Clover actually do have the same semblance of fortune? Also, how do you think that Crow developed this semblance of misfortune? How do you think it's going to play a role in the future of Ruby and continue to develop as the series continues? I'm interested to know your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this Ruby video and will subscribe for more Ruby content in the future throughout the breaks and the volumes as they continue to go on. Follow me at PhoenixKnight7 on Twitter and I'll see you guys in the next video.